Today I'm going to create a mixed media canvas using materials that would normally be thrown away. I've been following the monthly prompts that my friend Nina Rabina shares on her YouTube channel. I'll put the link to her videos in the description below. And she's also got a friendly Facebook group called Nina Rabina's Art Journal Prompts and More, where you can share your own pieces based on her prompts. And I'll pop the link to that in the description box too. The theme for February is Recycle, Reuse, Repurpose. And this week Nina shared some ideas for using images cut from wallpaper samples. And that really inspired me to have a go as I, I'd got some samples that I wanted to use. So here's my take on that idea. I'm going to be working on a canvas board here. I like canvas boards because they, they don't buckle, they stay sturdy. You could do this on a piece of card and put it into an art journal, piece of mixed media card, mount board, anything that's going to withstand... Um, a bit of glue and wet media, but I like these are cheap enough to buy. I think these were from Lidl. Um, I know the works sell packs for a few pounds. You can get them from your craft store, and the, the, the better quality ones are going to cost you a little bit more. But for this, it really doesn't matter. I just like this. It's about sort of six by eight inches, I would say, the size. And I'm going to be using some paint um, that I've got in my stash, but the materials mainly are going to be things that, as you say, would normally go into a recycling. I'd got this uh, rather busy wallpaper sample that I'd hung on to for a while with sort of tropical birds and butterflies and flowers. There's, there's sort of glittered areas on it and it, it, was, it was really nice. And I've cut out, um, I've done this off camera, you didn't want to watch me slowly cut out this design, this bird on a branch with some flowers. Um, just carefully cut it out and then I've gone around the cut edges with the, the chisel end of a marker pen just to sort of hide any white bits that may be showing. It just neatens it all off and that's going to be the focal design on my finished canvas. Before I get to the point of sticking that down there's going to be other layers in there and some of the things I'm going to use, um, I've got some tissue paper here that's printed. It's got a white on white printed design. Put it on there, you can see it. It's actually a, all a Keeley design and that was out of a set of toiletries and I saved that. People who know me know I love all the Keeley um, designed patterns. I've also got a scrap of card that I'd die cut some circles out of this and this was the waste that was left and I'm thinking of using this to draw some circles and I've got this that was out of a, a microwave meal I believe I think it was a thing that separated the vegetables from the sauce and like any good crafter thought that's going to make a good stencil so I gave that a good wash and saved that and I'm going to use that to add more detail in the background as well I think I've also cut out some butterflies um, from the wallpaper. I don't know if I'm going to be using them on this project. I might be putting them onto some ATCs, but uh, I thought they were worth saving. So those I'll, I'll keep to one side for now. You may see them appear, you may not, I don't know yet. But to begin with, I'm going to paint um, a canvas. I, I've had a sort of look at what I wanted, what I thought this would look nice with, and I sort of held it against different colour cards, and I've decided to go for sort of like bright turquoises and greens, and then this pink will really pop from that. So I've chosen some uh, Deco Art Crafters acrylic. We've got Spar Blue, Dark Turquoise, and Citrus Green, and I thought they would be nice. And I'm just going to randomly paint those all over the surface of my canvas to begin with. Right, so not being too particular, I just want to get some colour on here. And these three colours work well together, they're very close to each other, so I'm not bothered about them mixing and blending. If they do, they're still going to give me a good tone. Um, if you were using colours that were opposite each other on the colour wheels, for example, red and green, or orange and blue, you would have to take some care where the colours met because they all make a muddy mess. But these turquoise and uh, lime green shades, they blend together and still produce good complementary colours. So I'm quite happy to just keep dipping in with my brush and, and blend the colours together. Right, when you're happy with that, so I'll just wash the brush off and I'll help that dry by using my heat tool just to speed up the process. It shouldn't take too long, the paint's not on um, 
too thickly. So I'll just grab my heat tool. Now that that's completely dry, we can move on to the next stage, which is going to be applying that pattern tissue paper. Your paint needs to be completely dry, otherwise the decoupage medium that I'm using, or you can use a, a matte medium or even a, a glue that dries clearer to push if you wanted to use it. That might make the paint smear if it wasn't completely dry, but this is dry so it should be alright. So when I originally thought of doing this, I thought I was going to cover the whole piece with the tissue, but I I think I'm going to tear sections so some of, some of the areas of paint show through completely. And I'm just going to randomly do that. And I'm going to piece the, the pieces of tissue onto my canvas before I start gluing, which gives me the chance to move them around if I want to. I'll just see where my bird will be fitting into this design. I'm going to go with something along the lines of this arrangement. I'm using the Deco Art um, Decoupage, the matte finish glue and sealer. It's like a um, Mod Podge or a matte medium type of product. So if you have one of the other brands, please feel free to use that. I'm using this because this is what I've got. And I'm just going to use a brush to apply it to the surface of my canvas. And then I'm going to stick down my piece of tissue. And then go over the top with some more just to stick it down. It will crinkle a bit. I don't mind that it's going to crinkle a bit. It's not so noticeable when it's dry. And of course this um, decoupage medium dries clear. So the whiteness that you see at the moment will disappear to some extent. So make sure that all the edges are stuck down properly. Any areas where the tissue is overhanging the edge of the canvas can be trimmed off when it's dry, so don't worry about that. And we'll just let that dry. I can uh, speed that up a little bit with my heat tool too. So we'll do that and then we'll move on to the next stage once that's completely dry. Right, so this is now dry, it's completely dry, and I'm just going to trim off this excess bit of tissue. If you tried to do this while it was wet, it would just shred it, so it is worth having a bit of patience and letting it dry. And I'm just going to pop it down onto my chopping board, and using a scalpel, just carefully trim away the tissue paper. Right, so that's tidied the edges of that up a bit. I'm quite happy with that. I like the extra detail that this um, pattern tissue is giving me in the background. So the next thing I'm going to do is use my 
stencils, my masks. Now, yes, you can use any store-bought stencil for this, but the, the prompt that we're following here is, is repurposing and recycling. So I'm just trying to use things that, you know, you might not necessarily have any shop-bought stencils, but that shouldn't exclude you from being able to do something like this. If you don't have a die cutting machine, you may have a punch. You could cut designs in a piece of cardstock, um, just do it freehand. And I'm sure we've all found interesting little bits of packaging that we could use for, for make designs in things. So again, I'm just going to lay my focal image in place because I want to see where that's going to be at the end. And I'm going to begin by using this um, piece of scrap card to do some larger circle designs. And I'm thinking of using um, my Dina Wakeley scribble sticks. These are a water soluble crayon. So they look a lot like a wax crayon. You can draw with them, but you can then sort of blend them out with some water. There are other products on the market that are similar. I mean, you can you could use paints if you don't have something like this. Um, but there are things like the Neo Color crayons again. They look a lot like a wax crayon, um, but they blend out with water. There's uh, things like the gelatos. Again, um, they can be smudged and, and blended with water. There's distress crayons. There's there's a lot of things on the market that will do this job. But use whatever you've got in your in you know in your your craft room. Don't worry about having the same products. This is just sort of using up what I've got sitting around. So obviously I'm going to try and put some designs in this corner here, in this area here, maybe a bit up there. And I was just thinking... ...of drawing inside my homemade stencil. And then with a, with a fairly fine brush, just wetting the brush and blending that crayon to smudge it. Just to take away the harshness of that drawn line. And again, for the moment, I'm sticking with colours that coordinate with the ones I've already used. I think I'm going to put some contrast in at some point, but uh, I like this dark blue. Obviously, the more colour you lay down with one of these, the more you get when you create a wash with it. Now, I think I want to introduce another colour in. Um, obviously, we've got a, a bright pink in this design. I'll see what this looks like um, over the top of this. I'm hoping it doesn't uh, create a muddy mess. As my bottom layers are completely dry, it's not going to blend with them. It's just whether or not the colour's intense enough to stay showing up as a bright pink or whether it's sort of going to go wishy-washy. We'll see. that's absolutely fine that's staying a nice pink so I'll add a few of these to the canvas so once again I'm just going to check how that's going to look and I think I just need something there and then we'll be done I love these scribble sticks and I'm eagerly awaiting the second set that were launched at uh, Creativation this year. Um, different range of colours in them. And I'm sure they're going to be just as good as these. I like the fact that these stay so vibrant even when you water them. 
So I'm just going to dry that off with my heat tool. Um, I don't want any of this water to affect the, the paint or the ink. I haven't decided what's going through this yet. But again, it's the secret to mixed media. It, it's all about layers and get each layer dried before you move on to the next one. It makes life a lot easier and stops a lot of problems from happening. Like all good uh, mixed media artists, we all like a bit of black and white just to add some sort of interest. Um, again, from the Crafters Acrylic range from Deco Art there, I've, I've got the black. Um, th this white is from Deco Art's Americana range, Snow White. Any black or white paint um, would do. And I'm just going to pop a bit of that in my palette until I decide what I'm going to do with it. I'm also trying to decide whether to use a little bit of pink through this uh, stencil. I do have a nice bright pink and I think that would look quite good. So I'm just going to grab that and be right back. So this is uh, Tutti Fruity from the Deco Art Crafters Acrylic range. It's a nice bright pink and I think that's going to coordinate well with my focal image. And I'm going to use um, a little foam applicator to dab through this stencil. It's easier than using a brush. With a brush, you, unless you're very careful, you can get too much paint on your brush and it'll seep through and look a mess. It's a lot easier to control with a little bit of foam. So this is just a little foam dauber. going to put a bit on the foam, take off the excess and pounce quite hard through. This is quite a thick piece of plastic. And that's uh, adding a nice little bit of contrasting interest. quite like that effect. It's subtle but it's just enough. Now we'll go back to the, the black and white and I think um, I'll, I'll splatter some paint on here. I do like some speckles. I'm just going to move these things out of the way slightly as I do have a tendency to make a huge mess when I'm splattering. And the easiest way I find is to water down a little bit of paint. The acrylic paint as it stands can be a little bit thick. And then just tap the brush and that creates a nice speckled effect. do also want to do something with the black and I'm considering some straight lines I think maybe with the black. So again sticking with the recycled theme this is one of those uh, fake promotional cards that come through in the junk mail and you know it's plastic so it's really good for using with paint. I'm going to have to pop a bit of this paint um, onto my mat, so I'll just, you, I'll just dry this brush off. Put that there. Don't need a lot. Just using a soaring motion, really. 
then again carefully uh, I'm just going to chuck that and add a little bit more down here in the bottom I think and I think that will uh, do for that Clean the paint off the edge of that and that can be reused in another project. So once again I'm going to dry this off and then uh, hopefully we might be ready to stick on the focal image. Now that that's dry I've decided I, I still want a bit more black in the background. This image has a lot of black and white and I feel I just want to define some of these circles that I've done. So I've got, uh, these are charcoal pencils from the works. You can get charcoal in, in a, like a wooden pencil form. You can get it in the sticks of natural charcoal. I like these that are just completely compressed, but you don't get it all over your fingers. Um, and this is just a paper blending stump. I think these are in the works as well, or your, your local craft store. And I basically, I just want to add a bit more definition to parts of these circles. So I'm going to go around with my charcoal. I don't know that I need to draw a complete circle around each one. And then just use the blending stump just to smudge the charcoal out a little bit. And I think that's going to just help define these circles a little bit more. And I'll feel that ties in well then with that, that printed image that we're using. I'm trying to put my charcoal just to the outside of the colour. I don't want to completely obliterate the colour. And I don't want to do this on every circle either. Just trying to find a nice balance. So let's just see what that looks like. I think that's much better. I think it, it's bringing some of that design up a little bit so this doesn't look too harsh against it. Yeah, I'm, I'm much happier with that. Um, I think the one other thing that I want to do on this canvas before I stick this down, I'm just trying to avoid messing this up, to be honest. I want to get some black around the edge and I'm thinking um, I'm going to use a little bit of the black acrylic I've got left there just on a, a little sponge dauber just to frame this canvas off quite nicely. I could actually, I could use the scribble sticks, but I've got a little bit of paint there and I'd, I'd save that going to waste, I'm gonna use that. So I'm just gonna dab this around the edge you could use an ink pad and say so you could use one of the crayons I'm just using this paint because it's there so that I think you'll agree that that black edge it just tidies it up and just frames it um, frames the piece so again quick blast with my heat tool to dry that off and then I should be ready to glue on my bird on a branch. All right, so that's dry now. I've made sure that's completely dry. I don't want to smudge that black paint everywhere. And I'm going to uh, put my bird on a branch on. I'm using the decoupage medium again that I used earlier for the tissue paper. And I'm just thinking of the easiest way to do this. Just move that up and out of the way slightly. And 
just, I know I'm slightly out of shot here, but I'm just applying this to the back of my wallpaper. It doesn't matter if any of it smears a bit on the front because it does dry matte, so we shouldn't be able to see it. Carefully flip it over. And position it on my canvas. those bits down. I'll just wipe some of this glue off here. And I'm just going to make sure that all those loose little, little fiddly ends are stuck down. If there's any bits that don't look like they're stock, I can just, uh, like that little bit there, just pop a little bit more underneath. It does dry quite quickly. So the only other thing to decide was whether or not I was going to put on a butterfly and I really don't think I need one. Um, now I'm going to save the butterflies for another project. I've got an idea for those. I think all that this needs is uh, a sentiment of putting on there. So I'm just going to trim this little bit of a leaf off here that's just extending over the side. Again, just going to get my knife. Just snip that tip off there. And I'll be back with uh, some sentiment stickers in a moment. So I've got a huge selection of word stickers to choose from. I'm a big fan of these Tim Holtz ideology ones. Um, today I'm going to use my, my go-to set out of these, which is the small talk set um, with the phrases in. And I'm going to pick a couple to put on here. I'm going to use the black ones. And I think today we're going to have Be Your Beautiful Self. And I'm going to pop that down here, try and get it straight. And underneath, I think we're going to have Never Doubt Your Instinct. So here we have it. This is the finished piece and I'm really thrilled with how this has turned out. I love the bright colours, I love the, the subtle design of that printed tissue in the background, the fact that we've created our own stencils and masks, that was really good fun as well. And I finally found a good use for this beautiful bird design. Um, I'm sure you'll see the butterflies that I'd cut out appear on another project shortly. I'm glad I didn't put them in, I don't think we needed them in here today. So all that's left for me to say is if you enjoyed this video, then please leave me a thumbs up. It lets me know you enjoyed it. It lets YouTube know that you enjoyed it. If you're not already subscribed um, and you've enjoyed this video, then click that subscribe button and then you won't miss out on any future videos from me. Take a look through what I've already created. There may be something else in there to inspire you. As always, if you want to leave me a comment, please do. It's, it's If you've got any questions, if there's anything that you'd like to see, 
I'm always open to suggestions. I can't promise um, to be able to do everything that's requested, but I'm quite happy to give things a go. At the end of the day, I produce these videos for your enjoyment. So if there's something that you would like me to be demonstrating, um, then please make a suggestion and I'll do my best to accommodate. So in the meantime, don't forget to check out Nina Ribena's links that I've popped below. Um, she's done some wonderful videos and that the prompts are very broad, easy to follow. The Facebook group is wonderful, um, very encouraging, very friendly. And as long as you're following her prompts, you, you can post any any projects that they can be journal pages and ATCs, tags, anything that's inspired by her video prompts. So don't forget to check that out. I think she's approaching 3000 members now in that group, if I remember rightly. I might be wrong. Who knows? Um, but it's very successful and, and all credit to her and and the members that, that post regularly. I found it to be a very friendly and welcoming place to be. So that's all for me, from me for now. So uh, thank you. Goodbye.